The Reach, a kingdom so pleasant and peaceful that POV characters in the current story can't spend very much time here because who wants a story filled with no conflict? If your region is mainly known for the sunshine and bountiful harvests, you know you picked the right place to reside. But every kingdom has their children born out of wedlock, who will never have it as good as their true-born relatives, as much as these characters try and change that. Bastard children from the noble houses in the Reach are given the surname Flowers, a pleasant name for a pleasant kingdom. This name that separates children from the main house to prevent succession issues and inheritance is very different than the rest given out in other kingdoms. The others are far more harsh to match their respective kingdoms' climate and terrain. Northerners get snow, the Dorn is sand, stone over at the Vale, and so on. But they all serve the same purpose. Inform where you're from, describes the region in one word, and makes these characters feel like shit. Even with all this angst towards their family, you won't see the flowers turning on their family as often as you would in other kingdoms. The Reach is all about chivalry and courtesy. A lot of you guys would be surprised to find out one of the only few Flowers characters actually makes an appearance very early on into the story. Seven episodes in into Game of Thrones, and about halfway through with the first book, we meet Jafar Flowers. Remember this guy? I should probably show you his face, huh? The other one's Jaffa Flowers, my lord. That's the hand the wolf tore off. I doubt that'll jog your memory though, with this very minor character who only gets seconds of airtime. Jafar was one of the two dead brothers of the Night's Watch ghosts helped discover beyond the wall. Jafar's group, led by Benjen Stark, went ranging to figure out what was going on with their disappearing buddies. Like the missing brothers they were searching for, Benjen's rangers appeared to be attacked by White Walkers, and Jafar was left in the haunted forest with an axe blow to the neck. We see firsthand the other ranger resurrect and attack the Lord Commander back at Castle Black. But away from the cameras, Jafar was also attacking as a white and manages to take out five of his former brothers before being put down for good. There's also another brother of the Night's Watch in the current story with the name Flowers, but this one's alive and well. Good old Rusty Flowers. Don't know why these guys left the comfort of the Reach for the Wall, but maybe they didn't have a choice in the matter. Since he's just your average crow with only his name mentioned, I'd rather move on to more interesting characters, like some Tyrell bastards. So Mace Tyrell's uncle, who doesn't have the best reputation, had some children out of wedlock during his easy and privileged youth. He has two mentioned sons with an unnamed woman or women, Gars Flowers, the elder, and Garrett Flowers, the younger brother. It could be pretty difficult to find a place in a castle like Highgarden for bastards, where the Tyrells rule from, so they gotta carve a path of their own outside of that sweet, sweet inheritance. These two bastards were expecting positions in the Gold Cloaks, which is the city watch in King's Landing, kind of like a police force. But this was under the condition of their father being appointed as a master of coin for the king. But since Cersei prevented all of that because of her fear and hatred for the ambitious Tyrells, Garth and Gary are still left jobless. One current minor character who is growing more in relevance is a bastard from House Fossilway, making Franklin Flowers here the bastard of Cider Hill. This is where the angst towards main family members begin. Franklin's mother was a washerwoman at Cedar Hall, the Fossilway seat in the Reach, who Franklin claims was raped by one of the Lord's sons, so you can understand why his resentment is so strong. Franklin currently lives one continent over to the east as a sellsword captain for the Golden Company, so pretty prestigious stuff. He's grown to be a big-bellied, shambling hulk of a man, with a face crisscrossed with old scars. His right ear looks as if a dog chewed on it, and his left ear is missing. Sellswords are constantly fighting others' wars, which explains his rough appearance. Franklin is presented with the perfect opportunity to get some revenge on his relatives when the Golden Company sail over to Westeros to get in on this major war during the last book. Franklin Flowers slapped his sword hilt and said, So long as I can kill some fossilways, I'm for it. So we'll see if he truly means these words in the next book. Philea Flowers' hate for her family is on another level though. She's one of two characters that motivated me to make this whole thing. Philea actually acts on her resentment in the current story. She's the bastard daughter of Lord Humphrey Hewitt, one of the families ruling over these small islands in the Reach. When Euron Greyjoy makes his grand entrance during a feast for crows, he immediately attacks these islands. They're overwhelmed by the Ironborn and House Hewitt fall to Euron. Philea, at the time, was just a serving lady at the family's castle, and then Euron took her as his woman. When the castle fell, Philea suggests that her stepmother and trueborn half-sisters serve the Ironborn in the nude as revenge for all her years serving them. 
I don't want to get into too much spoiler territory for the next book, but George Martin did write this character's outcome in a wild sample chapter. I'm just going to say that she's convinced and excited that Euron will make her one of his wives. And if you know anything about the book version of Euron, this just reads as bad news. The other bastard that pushed me to make this vid is Glendon Flowers. There's a lot going on with this character, and he's long dead by now, by the start of the current events. In the last of the short stories George Martin has put out, called The Mystery Knight, Glendon is a standout, and in a Song of Ice and Fire fashion, the poor bastard is as tragic as it gets. He hated the Flowers surname enough to try and cover it up by calling himself Glendon Ball. That's all because his mother, a prostitute by the way, told him that his father was the renowned fighter Quinton Ball. Glendon would even use Quinton's personal coat of arms, a fireball blazing red and yellow across a night black field, as his own. But Glendon's mom, called Penny Jenny, slept with many men as a camp follower. Quinton was just one of hundreds who she slept with before a battle, so who really knows if Quinton is the father? He would die in that major battlefield, and so Glendon would never meet the man who he believes to be his father. His mother would eventually die while working in a brothel, and Glendon, along with his sister, were raised by the women working in the brothel, called Pussy Willows. When Glendon tried to call himself a ball, others would insult him by calling him the Knight of Pussy Willows. The story of how he became a knight was pretty messed up. He was trained by an old squire living near the brothel he was raised in. And when he was 16, an opportunity came to get knighted. The only way to become a knight in this story is to be knighted by another knight, preferably with name recognition or witnesses. Without a war to distinguish yourself, it'd be very difficult for a bastard in the ranks of Glendon to get knighted. He took the easy route and traded his sister's maidenhood for a knighting ceremony in front of 24 witnesses. Don't know how he convinced her of that. He would immediately try and bring notoriety to his name by entering attorney and ended up being a natural. He was beating all the competition before he was arrested and tortured under the charge of stealing a dragon egg. A dragon egg was supposed to be the prize of this tourney, but it would never conclude. The whole thing was just an act to gather support for a rebellion against the Targaryens. Glendon was only arrested because of how well he was performing. When given the chance to prove his innocence in a trial by combat, Glendon jousted in one last tilt while still enduring the effects of torture. He defeated the man trying to overthrow the Targaryens, and that's where his story ends. Everyone just went along with seeing him locked away in a cell for good, just because he was a bastard. It's a common belief in this world that all bastards are thieves. We don't know if he got to live a long and fulfilling life with a happy ending, but Glendon did aspire to be a member of the Kingsguard. So if we get another short story or more lore books, this has to be answered. In the past, there lived a handful of notable bastards from the Reach, with superior skill in battle. This kingdom is where knighthood was born, so you can't let the surname Flowers fool you. Byron Flowers, aka Black Byron, was a renowned knight around the same time Glennon Flowers' father would have been alive. Byron was a rebel and likely died on the same battlefield as Quentin Ball. Further back, Tom Flowers led a host during the Targaryen Civil War and was one of many to die to a dragon's flames. Robert Flowers, or Red Robert Flowers, was a Kingsguard member who rose to be Lord Commander. Another bastard from the Reach that would be recognized as one of the best fighters in the realm was Mervyn Flowers. He was appointed to the Kingsguard during a chaotic time in King's Landing. The Civil War just ended. Most of the Targaryens were dead, and their dragons too. The king was a little kid named Aegon III, who wasn't even old enough to make any decisions. Mervyn involved himself in this weird conspiracy, believing foreigners wanted to overthrow the young king in secret. He ended up killing his lord commander when it came time to answer for his mistakes, then tried to run off on horseback but was beaten to death. Dickon Flowers, the bastard of Beesbury, was one of seven men who fought a king and his allies early into the Targaryen's reign when he usurped the throne. He was one of the warrior's sons, a deeply religious militant group that only answered to their religious leader. Dickon was involved in the Seven vs. Seven trial by combat called the Trial of Seven, but King Magor the Cruel would be the only survivor. The warrior's sons had to be disbanded soon after for how powerful they were becoming. Magor Targaryen was awful though, so I wouldn't consider this Flowers to be a traitor at all. The last guy lived in an era a little closer to the main story, but never made it long enough to be a part of the current events. A lady from House Hightower, one of the most rich and powerful families in Westeros, had a son out of wedlock with an archmaester of the Citadel. The Citadel is where a maester studies and forges their chains. It's located in Old Town, the city the Hightowers rule over. But still, these two parents make an interesting pair. 
Their son, Wallace Flowers, would also grow up to be a maester to serve other nobles in their castles. He was stationed in the north to serve the Starks of Winterfell. From the reeds to the north, what a bad draw. His lord was Rickard Stark, Ned's father. Wallace would go on to have a pretty significant impact in this world. Historically, Starks never married into other families that weren't vassals of theirs. Wallace persuaded Lord Rickard that making beneficial marriage alliances outside of the north made way more sense. It would be an easy way to form strong lifelong allies. This led to his firstborn son, Brandon's betrothal to Catelyn Tully, and Lyanna's betrothal to Robert Baratheon. The North, Riverlands, and Stormlands alliance is what took down the Targaryens and saved the realm from the Mad King's carnage. Shout out to Wallace for that. Let me know if you guys want to see a stone, hill, or storm version of this type of video. Cause right now I'm undecided if this should be a full series of every kingdom. This one here, the flowers, and the previous few were just bigger priorities because of these fun character backstories. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see y'all next week.